This morning we are going to talk about this uh, practical session in the laboratory of Asir Central Hospital. Here we are in the blood bank section and we have our student from level 8, uh, laboratory science student. This course is actually uh, for quality control and laboratory management. And this laboratory management, we are going to take it as a first part and then we'll talk about the quality control in this section. Regarding laboratory management, we have uh, 13 points we are going to talk about. First, if you have been assigned to work in this place, and you, gave, you have a letter, and then what shall you do? How you start? An idea? How you start your first day in this section? Any idea? No idea at all. So okay. First of all, we are going to draw lab, laboratory ma map, which is a sketch. What is the content of this place? And this uh, sketch, I have some uh, drawing like this, in which we are putting our uh, shelf and tables and what, what is there, refrigerator, incubators, any similar uh, picture um, in the drawing. Then we have to differentiate it in section A, B, C, for example. And then we put our higher shelf, H, and lower uh, cupboards as low or L. And then you can put also your office or table and your hood or incubator or refrigerator at it is in similar places. So you have a map like that. Then what after that, we are doing numbering. We will put some numbers on these places like this. So we have, for example, A1. That means the station or the office will be number one, A1. We put office, for example, the content is office. And then we put A H1, which is section A, high shelf, number one. So when you open this cupboard, you will find, for example, flask or beakers or whatever content is there. So others like A H2 and A L1, this is the lower cupboard. What is there, for example, gloves or plastics and so on. So the, the B section will be similar and C section will have the similar things. So you have a very nice view and sketch of your laboratory component. Then you put some remarks for checkup. And this is, should be mainly contain date of checkup and signature of the person who did the checkup. This is a way how you keep your things uh, updated and followed. Okay, so this is clear. Huh? So the second step we are doing is the equipment. Equipments, you keep your uh, attention to your equipment and they are valuable. Okay, and you need them to be uh, updated and working fine. So equipment like what? An example of equipment in the lab? Shakers, refrigerators, okay, and incubators, and all these things. Huh? So regarding the equipment, you need to put two important things. Working steps, sticks, very small stick, how it works, uh, okay on and off and all the step of working. And then very nice small stick regarding the instruction for quality. So you need to uh, clean it every day, for example. You need to change the water every week. You put some uh, remarks or points for, equipment, uh, for quality control regarding this, uh, for example, uh, equipment. Then the reagents will be the third step, or the fourth step, actually. Reagents can be liquid reagents or powder or any sort of reagents. So these reagents are very important. You put similar reagents together. For example, you have acids, put the acids together in one shelf or one cupboard. Well, that's clear. And then you put uh, your list of reagents in each shelf. For example, I have hydraulic acids, uh, for, uh, bio, uh, uh, for example, uh, lactic acids, any type of acids or alcohol. And then you put the expiry date, which is very important. For reagents, you have to keep in mind your expiry date. The fifth step regarding the management is the personnel. Personnel means 
people who are working, okay? So you put a list of your personnel. For example, in this section, blood bank, uh, you put a list. Number one, we have how many consultants, for example, how many specialists, how many lab technicians, and others, if you have workers or others, okay? And this should be in the list. And then you can add the specialty of each, I mean certificates of each of these persons, okay? And then you can add also the training, training period they have spent. For example, um, X uh, have spent some training period in Riyadh, in Masala hematology or, or something like that. So you can keep updated. Your personnel is trained every time and then, okay? And then number six, the operational manual, which is very important. Operational means working. So we divide the operation manual. You have to have a manual of operation. And this manual should be divided into three sections. Pre-analytical steps, and intra-analytical and post-analytical. This is a pre-analytical, mainly you are taking care of your samples. Okay, how you collect the sample, who is bringing the sample, Okay, and how you prepare the sample before starting. For example, you need to do centrifugation and, and other uh, sort of uh, function. And then labeling, which is very important labeling. You put the ID uh, of the hospital file and the person, uh, patient name and age and so on. And the analytical steps, which is intra-analytical steps, this is the working steps. Also, you put some remarks on the steps. For example, you have to do this, you add 15 mil of this and you fix it on a slide and like that. So you, someone will come and see, he, he can do it. He can follow a new one or a new any paper, he can follow the steps. Now the post-analytical steps, which is important regarding the reporting of analysis, I mean the results. So how you report your results? Is it a hard copy on a, on a form, okay? Or in software, you put it in your computer. So you keep it in your records uh, for longer time, uh, and you can retrieve your uh, results. Seven, which is important, the working environment. Environment means the temperature, the light, the ventilation, the spaces, uh, the uh, furniture. You need chairs, you need uh, office, you need tables, like that. So this is what we call it environmental. Uh, uh, environmental uh, working environmental situation right this is important regarding the lab laboratory management for the this course we are dealing with this section of blood bank and we have this form and this form should be filled by the student and you write your name and your ID the date of an inspection or being trained here in this section and this is Asir Central Hospital, and this is Abha General Hospital. And the different section here is blood bank, serology, and microbiology. You tick on the suitable place, and then you list the activities. So what, let us start by listing the activities of this section. What activities are done in this place? What we are doing here? Blood donor, blood donation. Yes, and I say, and then we have um, uh, some test before we do the blood donation. For example, we have, uh, first of all, we take some history and we have some uh, sort of forms and we fill in. This history should contain what is the last time you have donated and have you any disease like diabetes, hypertension, have any problem like, uh, uh, for example, uh, hepatitis before or malaria. This should be filled on the form. And after that, you do some clinical examination for this donor and you can just weigh him take his blood pressure and take his uh, weight yes weighing and take his uh, blood pressure and so on and pulse and so on and if he is suitable for donation and you are going to do some test which is important for us so these tests are actually summarized in this form it's very nice small uh, card which is, should be done for our microbiology department Number one is HBSAG. What is this? Hepatitis B. Hepatitis B antigen. What is the significance of this? What is the importance of this? If it is positive, what does that mean? Hepatitis B. That is hepatitis, so you will not take blood from 
hepatitis positive, صح؟ and then uh, the heart, second one which is HCV virus, yes, and then HIV which is human immunovirus, and HL, HTLV which is a human T lymphocytes virus, and then we have uh, if you can see this is one, two, three, four are viral. These are viruses. Yeah? Then we go below, we have VDRL. What is a VDRL? It is a test for syphilis. And the abbreviation is VDRL is Venereal Disease Research Laboratory. Venereal means sexual. Huh? Venereal Disease Research Laboratory. This is a test which is not specific for syphilis. It is a screening test and it's usually done as agglutination test, antigen antibody test. They are doing this test uh, in the second a place there, and we can see it later on. And if it is positive, you have to send this patient to do specific tests for syphilis. And uh, we have different type of specific tests. Anyway, then we go to the MP. What is the MP? Malaria. Malaria. So we have parasites, we have bacteria, we have viral. Four type of viruses we have to screen for. And then we have the last one, which is ABO. What is ABO? Blood grooming, and I think we have some um, uh, small tests for blood grooming, and this can be done here with uh, kits, special kits for blood grooming, and these kits actually contain of three type of vials outside, so we can see it outside. Um, blood grooming, yes. So we have this uh, actual uh, three type of bottle or vial. What is this one? What is the blue color? Anti. Anti. So what is this uh, donate means if it is positive? So he have B. So, so he's blood B. So the other one is anti. Anti B. The same. The B is the base. And this one is the clear one. Anti D, which is resource. Yes. Okay. So this is the three things. So what actually you do? You can put it in a slide or you put it in a piece of wood and you put your drops of blood from the donor, three drops. And then you add one drop from each bottle in these three drops. At the end of the day, you will find clotting in certain places and you can read it. Fine, very good. So we know they have universal donor and universal recipient. Okay, the O usually is uh, donor. And while uh, ABO, usually they are recipient. Recipient means they used to take from others and they are not suitable to give, okay? Right, this is what is uh, abbreviated here, RHD, R, recess, which is, yes, antigen, which is positive or negative. Okay, and if you can see, this is a form I told you about, which should be filled first, containing some questions, 16 questions, for example, in Arabic, but we can translate it. Do you want to, uh, do, have you been donated last, uh, weeks, for example, eight weeks before, because this is a shorter period, you should not uh, give blood during eight weeks before. So longer duration is better. And have you been de donated before? Have your wife donated? And so on, different names, especially what we are interested in. Have you have hepatitis before? Have you been diagnosed as HIV? Have you leishmania? Have you any Rift Valley or any viral disease, Ebola, and so on? And then we have also to tick these diseases here, malaria, TB, leishmania, and many different names, and uh, diabetes, and cancers, and so on. And then we have, at the end, to do our clinical evaluation by weighing and taking uh, the same thing. So he, when you find some tests here, you can read it, and then you can see our sample, positive or negative, how, by which way? By using? Uh, by eye. Visual, direct, direct vision. So you say the test is read by direct vision. Okay, and then what, what, how, what do you learn from this section? Should be learned here. Did you, have you see, learned anything more than you have learned in the university or similar? So uh, anyway, you, I, at least we know how we, we are processing this in these places. Huh? Uh, starting by filling this uh, two questionnaire or two forms, and then we do our uh, donation. And then you comment on this, is the place is uh, good or not, 
And, and so we go to the other inside section where the uh, processes are done for this test, most of them, and we can show, show you some tests there, okay? And Roman, this is, this is a place where the donors will stay, relax, comfortable, and you have to relax him before you take his blood. And this is some uh, instrument for blood pressure and pulse and so on. And this can be detected before taking blood. So we go inside. And then, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. MP, VDR, venereal disease, research laboratory. Yes, this is for syphilis. Uh, for blood, for blood donor, it's from blood. Yes. No, other bacteria are not important yani, for donation. And they usually it, uh, healed, or they couldn't, a patient all is ill, and you go and send him for treatment. Like in syphilis, then you stay long in your body. Sometimes had to come asymptomatic, no symptoms. So you are carrier which is serious. Okay, we see here, this is a bag of blood. This is ready uh, for donation. And this is written here, A positive, and the ID number of the donors should be used. So the question here, if we can have a look to this, we have refrigerators where we have, this is important, this is centrifuge for separation of serum because we need to take antibodies. Uh, this is uh, your colleagues, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, he's doing the identification of the blood uh, packet, which should be around 500 cc. And uh, it should be clear, you know, it is A or positive. Why? Because the problem of hypersensitivity, allergy, if you give someone a blood group which is not suitable, he might die, yani, especially in life. But sometimes, if you are in emergency and you don't find any suitable blood group for your, your uh, recipient, patient, you give him anything. This is first of all. The hint, better if you have O negative, which can be donor for anyone, right? So if you have a look to the refrigerator, which is nice refrigerator, clear shelf, A plus, A plus O plus, O plus, and B, and so on. This is actually not to make any mistakes. And it can be only on the bucket, like it also should be felt in this. So the question is that if you have frozen blood, and you have fresh blood. Which one you will give it to your patient? Which one is better for your patient? The frozen one or the fresh one? Sewing, mm. frozen and sewing. And why? What's the reason? Is there any reason? Uh, sometimes some people they say because we don't want to have it as expiry data and so on. So it is a comic economical rather than scientific. But there is scientific background for this. Why you take the frozen one? Because the fr freezing itself is sterilization. It is killing other microorganisms. And freezing enough so it is a way of sterilization. Especially syphilis. VDR can be negative, but also can have some syphilis bacteria. Which is which is the bacteria name of syphilis? Treponema pallidum. Treponema pallidum, which is spiral bacteria. So the treponema is sometimes give you negative VDRL, and it's not that sensitive test. But if you did free freezing for two days, 48 hours, you are going to kill any suspicious uh, bacteria. So your patient, for him, it's better to have frozen blood than fresh blood. Unless you have some certain things like platelets or other uh, blood uh, component. But if you want whole blood, it's better to give him frozen blood. Okay, so in this place also they're doing serology. Uh, yes, Eliza, in that one. So Eliza is there, and, and with the serology. And uh, this is for syphilis uh, or hepatitis. Okay, so we we'll go to the section inside. You go with this, okay? So we'll continue, man. This is a PCR uh, section. And uh, they have a very nice uh, instrument. How will they come? Actually, a million real, 10 million reals or something like that. Very expensive, very expensive device. The man starting from maybe from here or from here? From this one. Huh? You upload your samples here. For 
Bullying. So okay, can we have some idea? No, no, you used to give some idea, and then I was I will add. It's okay. This is for bullying. This for repair the sample. This for identification. For identification. So we have three steps. Three steps. Yes. Yes. So this is a way you have. What what disease you are screening for? For hepatitis B virus. Hepatitis B virus. Very nice. So you are doing the four viral. Section here, HBS. This is Eliza. This is Eliza. For Eliza. BCR for test B virus, C virus, HIV only. I see. So that is by slowly. That is by slowly, and this is by PCR. This is by PCR. RNA, DNA. DNA, RNA. RNA. So this is a PCR section, which is very specific, very sensitive, and very rapid test. And there's a software here where you can register your. So this is the real time PCR. Real time. Real time. There's no gel. No gel. That means this is a real-time PCR. You'll get your result on the screen in the shape of arrows and uh, waves. Can we have uh, any idea of... Uh, yes, you can. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Just quickly. Thank you. Oh, the computer is closed mm. because it's... Uh, Taib, will take some time. Anyway, we'll have waves. Huh? Print it? Yes. Mm, okay, yes, sir. thank you very much. <coughs> this uh, is Yes. All right. For example, Mikhail General Hospital. Aywa. The target non-reactive. Yes. Mean no virus in the sample. Yes. If reactive, maybe here no reactive or non-reactive. If reactive, give me reactive only. We'll give you a theta. Mean a number. We'll give you a number. No, no, not give me a number. Give me only reactive. Positive, negative. This qualitative, not quantitative. Yes, very nice. Okay. It's qualitative. If reactive, I don't know. Maybe we have test B. Maybe we have test C. I see. Maybe by Eliza, I can detect it. طيب وكوانتيتيف ما عنده why كوانتيتيف الحين فتح دكتور في في السموم I see because the means طبعا of the quantitative for the qualitative إنه will give you the viral load yeah viral load ديك الفيريميا how much yes and this is like theater like strolling like Eliza so if you have a viral load for example 500 CD4 for HIV مثلا so we think this is a serious uh, condition for this uh, HIV patient like that so the viral load is in the more specific for the situation of the patient you can adjust his treatment or you can it's send him home specific and sensitive, doctor. this one yes uh, but it is positive negative positive negative only. so quality for screening for, donor. for screening donors yes and uh, if you find someone positive what are you do you send him to if I, uh, serology yes serology yes. if uh, positive also send yes. to real yes. to uh, because now, uh, mm. if you have, I'm not, not doing it. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Shukran. Anyway, this PCR actually is very expensive lab, like very useful and very specific. And you have to have some uh, other equipments like centrifuge, uh, rotators, and, and water pass, uh, adjustable pivots, uh, specific things like. Um, do you have any other things specific for PCR uh, yes, lab? No. Uh, you can, be, can use because you have closed system, no the closed system, no, yeah. no manual. Only Everything only is only automatically. Only yes, yes. this is the uh, different. Yes. yes, this is why it is expensive, and the uh, <laughs> contamination is a problem. No contamination. No contamination, because if you have contamination, you get from amplifier to tackman by uh, automated. You see, automated from yes. it's, it goes through like that. Amplifier. Very nice. So there, there's uh, no way for contamination. So you have your sample positive. That means hundred percent positive. So it will not be false positive or false negative. Yeah? How many samples? Uh, usually, uh, I think I have, we take... I have uh, six racks. Mm -hmm. yes. This is uh, three batch, six racks. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, 126 samples. Mm -hmm. Too three much, three much mashallah. Yes, too much. Mm? Uh, <coughs> maybe take uh, from nine to ten hours to... Uh, run to all the run, all the results. Very nice, Allah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the serology section. In this section, we are doing screening for uh, antibody for any infectious disease, autoimmune disease, and also we are screening the, sta the immune statue of uh, patient. Most of our tests are doing by ELISA technique, and for uh, autoimmune disease like uh, ANA, anti-DNA, we are testing this test by immunofluorescence essay. Other techniques are doing by ELISA also. Um, 
Most of our tests are manual, but some uh, for ERISA tests they are doing, we are doing by semi-manual technique. Other tests? We are also screening for uh, IgE total and IgE specific. Besides that, we are also following uh, HIV patient. Among the tests doing by this, uh, for this patient, we are doing uh, screening HIV. Any test positive, we are doing confirmatory test. And also we are doing uh, um, some marker like CD4, CD8. Also, we are doing other tests as agglutination tests. Most of the tests for uh, Vidal test, Brussela test, rheumatoid factor, and CRP. Also, by, uh, for parasitic disease, we are screening by hemagglutination technique, like amibiasis, echinococcus, uh, leishmania, bilharzia. Ah. And also, we are uh, using immunofluorescence essay. For principal, principally for uh, ANA, anti-DNA. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Say okay. So, what samples we use here? We use actually blood samples, and we are we, we are fond of having serum, not the whole blood, because we are detecting antigen antibody. So we are interested in the antibodies uh, sample. Usually there is a form you, where you have the, all the tests or the activities run by this section. Sometimes some of these tests will not be uh, any available, uh, maybe problem of reagents or something. Anyway, most of them, which is important one is hepatitis and HIV because um, these are serious diseases and we need to confirm the diagnosis by serology, which is... Uh, so when you enter in the serology lab, just remember, and we have quantity and quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, Arabic means kami and no way. So the no way, which is quality, usually it is positive, negative. And actually, mainly it could be like agglutination test. You put drop on a slide, and yes, you see it is positive or negative. Okay. Like that, okay? Like pregnancy test, like Lancet Lancet's test for streptococcus, like that. So it will be positive, negative. And the serology, or quantitative, which is uh, numbers, will give you teeter. So you have to have something called cut, cut off point, which is a point by which you can determine your positive sample and negative sample. And this can be just um, imaginary. You can calculate all the measurements and you took the average. And average is the most And you say above this average is positive, below is negative, like that. But th all this, actually, the company will tell you because they will send you also positive and negative control. You have to run control with these samples. So the positive and negative control with your samples, will, they will give you also the cutoff point. They tell you theta of one over, for example, 100 or 128, for example, for mycoplasma, it's positive, like that, okay? So we are doing actually serial dilution. You know serial dilution? And then uh, you can determine your cutoff point. So if you have a blade, and actually we have 96 blades, uh, well, this is called well. You, these blades, each well is, or each arrow, maybe for one patient, because you are doing dilution. Huh? And then you can see the positive or negative by change of color. You can see some of these blue in color or yellow in color, and you say this is positive, for example. Or you can see the precipitation down. If there is precipitation down, this is, for example, negative sample. If there is uh, homogeneous and no, no clotting down, it is positive, like that. So you can determine by eyes, and you can determine by reading, which is a reader, we call it. A reader will tell you how much this is, uh, teeter is, okay? So first of all, you have blood samples. You have to prepare your sample by separating the serum, and you take the serum for your, actually, mo most of your tests, because there's antibodies in that serum, okay? And then we can apply it on our plates, make sure you, know, you are not mistake or confused with other samples. Arrow number one is for uh, patient name, plan, 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 okay? Muhammad, for example, or something. So it is very, very important. And the plate is very small. It cannot give you space to write names and so on. 
you can have a draw. You can turn some rest and draw. And you say blade number one is for this arrow for Muhammad, for example, and this one. And then you see. So we have to add positive and negative control. Why? If the negative become positive in your uh, analysis or run, that means you have contamination. You have problem for your agents, other things. So you have to repeat it, okay? And your positive sample, if it has become negative, that means also there is a problem for reagents, for example, or it doesn't work, okay? So ELISA machine is very useful, okay? And it, it takes the whole theater and give you the, uh, the uh, run. So actually, we are doing uh, dilution, serial dilution, and we are applying our antigen, and then we can see uh, the reaction by doing add, adding certain uh, stain or colors, and then we can stop the reaction, and we can do some washing and all this. So the, the very nice setup of ELISA should be full automatic. That means you have a washer, ELISA machine, and you have a reader. So you have three components, and actually the reader should be computer. Uh, by, by printing your results. Um, but if some people, they're doing other, they're washing and these things manually by uh, pipetting this with a buffer and then you uh, clear it or dry it by air or just knocking uh, back the, uh, on the desk and then you retain and you add your other step of reaction. Okay? So ELISA machine, it has certain quality control measures. Yes, because you are depending on it for positive and negative, which for serious diseases like hepatitis and HIV and so on. So you have to do control, quality control for ELISA machine itself. Okay, and usually the quality, the good quality control for ELISA is by doing the positive and negative control from the companies. Some people they have known that certain companies are good, have good quality reagents. Okay, we don't want to make any propaganda for any company, like in you will by work, you know which best company for reagents. Also other things you need, it, as I said, certification, because you need the serum, see? Okay, that's the first step for preparation of your sample. Second, you have to do labeling, okay, on this form, you give the number, ID number, or file number, or hospital number, and then you do tick on your, which, which uh, uh, test you need to do. So give me some example for other not viral serological tests, non-viral, any other, bacterial for example. What sort of bacterial serological test can be done? We we'll talk about one of us in the blood bank, which one? Syphilis, VDRL. Okay. So specific tests for syphilis and non-specific tests. Syphilis can be done by serology. Other things like typhoid, which is very important, VDL test. Don't forget this name, huh? Vidal test and Brucella also. You know Brucella? Brucella is Human Maltia. It's coming from? Why it is common here or not? Is it common? Why? Any idea? Haliba uh, Labair. Camel. Camel milk. So it's common here. Muskia Dictora, you are doing this Brucella, typhoid, and. A screening test. No, a star test. Uh -huh. That's why we are doing an emergency test. An emergency. Uh, and we are releasing the test within one hour. One hour. One hour. Vidal test. Vidal test. But you wait for for having quantity of samples, or no. one sample can be run? For other tests, as we call routine tests, we are, yes, gathering the sample. Yes. And after we do our routine test. But for uh, Brussela, Vidal test, CRP, rheumatoid factor, we are considered as start test, and we, we are doing within one hour. Yes. yes. So that is immediate. That, that, that will more cost, and you are using one blade for one sample. And yes, for other tests, yeah. we are gathering yes. the sample. It will be expensive. And yes, for yes. other tests, yes. yes. Okay, instead of waiting, of waiting, for 100 samples, to run them in one blade, for example, you can, for emergency, as Victoria said, uh, you can put one sample, an emergency, in one blade. And by national blade, that might cost you 10,000 real, for example. So we are doing one test for 10,000 real, okay? Uh, so that is emergency. The others, actually, you need to wait. You keep your samples in the refrigerator on a deep freezer till you have a bulk of samples 
maybe to share this almost and you run them with each other and it goes it will be cost effective so it will be yani, useful for a uh, patient okay so that is a uh, Eliza that is a washer see that potils and that is a uh, Eliza readers and can be run by computer and you have your results computerized and this is uh, for example this is a printer also can be used as Eliza uh, reader we call it Eliza reader and the reading actually by using optic uh, density so yes. and uh, yes and they are just uh, optic density and then you can see this is positive or negative according to the optic density provided by the company which give you the test will tell you which optic density should be used for screening these samples clear any question no no more questions Akidi? Sure? Sure. Well, just to fill this uh, form and we'll okay. see you inshallah in the lecture. All right, see the man had direct in Taman. This is the back ticket. Okay? This is a very nice time to see. This is the back ticket. And what are you doing here, man? Uh, briefly, and, and tell them about this also. What is this? What are you doing here? Just to the eyes, blood culture. This all blood culture? All these uh, samples are blood culture, huh? Yes. Oh, okay. And this is, can be read by this uh, instrument, laser. Yes. And then it gives you positive or negative? Positive. And negative, okay? Positive and negative. Yes, this is a back tech actually. All right. And uh, well, this can be done manual, but back tech will give you uh, automatic uh, uh, readings for culture, okay? But we need to use this special vial, sort of vials. Certain vials for anaerobic growth and others for aerobic. It will be clear from the uh, color or it will be written on the bottle itself. It's aerobic or anaerobic. And then the reading will be here. And this comes here to the reader on software. And you can have, yes. Patient name. الاكسس ان لي ليبلينغ في في اللاب يعني الرقم حقها اللي نسويها ديت كوليكشن كوليكشن تايم يكون دايركت موجود فيها الهوسبيتال سيرفيس ديبارتمنت في الام ام سي سي او او الاي دي بعدين بس بالليزر تاخذ جهاز و افتر هاو لونج يو ريد 48 اور 72 اور 70 اور اوكي اند ذن وات ابوت ذا انتي بايوتيك ريزيستنت فور انتي بايوتيك انتي بايوتيكس يس نو فور كلتشر سب كلتشر سب فور انتي بايوتيكس ذا شو نوت بي هير اف ذير از بوزيتيف وي ويل دو سب كلتشر اند ذن وي بوت ات هير اولسو اجين اند يو جيف يو ا ريدنج هير فور انتي بايوتيكس ريدنج يس اه سي ذس از اونلي ريدنج Okay, thanks very much, Shukran. So actually, this is um, bacteriology section. We have microbiology, and we have bacterial, pure bacterial section. And if you start from the bacterial section here, there we'll collect the samples. And usually, samples can be urine, swabs, uh, sputum, can be uh, uh, blood for culture. All this can be sent for culture. And uh, we use culture blades commonly used nutrient agar and blood agar and other maconky agar for gram negative you know this from reading previous uh, studies and uh, you can do gram stain for positive and negative uh, gram stain and can do other stains for example gimsa or silver stain or others and you can do antibiotic sensitivity test by Kirby power disc which is a sort of filter paper you add it on the blades a culture blade and you keep it for 48 hours and you can see the positive sample I mean the resistant one will have clear zone around or there is no clear zone around so by measuring the zone surrounding the antibiotic circle clear and you can say this is positive or negative alas for example you have tetracycline and you can see the gross is it there is clear zone around this so that means sensitive to tetracycline if there is no clear zone you can say this is resistant to tetracycline, for example. Huh? So this is how you read uh, antibiotic sensitivity test. And usually we use filter paper for common usually use antibiotic, like uh, penicillin, uh, ciprofloxacin, or any common antibiotics. Then 
دكتور فاتن از ان شارج طبعا ويلكمينج يو يا دكتور فاتن ان ذس تريولوجي سيكشن ستيل از فور ذا اكتيفيتيز سوا نو This is the uh, processing area for culture. Okay. This is the, our processing area for culture English. Okay. This is our uh, our bacteriology media. Okay. This is how to receive your sample and to correlate uh, data with the request. Yes. This is the uh, clid media. Okay. This is blood agar. This is uh, maconky agar. This is chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate Maconky. agar. Mm. Clit. Clit. What is it? Clit. 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 Clit.
Yeah. You just uh, put some uh, degree according to the color of them. Yeah. And you scale it up. Yeah. You will compare your color here with this. We have here uh, this color, the chart, as you see. And you write your data as uh, positive, negative for every biochemical reaction. This we, uh, after that, you will collect a uh, number and you will translate this number from a uh, book. Yeah? You get the right angles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, tell us about the anaerobic job. Yeah. Okay. We have here uh, this anaerobic jar, okay? You will put the... Uh, In the... You will put it... You will put uh, this uh, carbon dioxide releasing kits. Yeah, you need to put here uh, had an anaerobic con container system like this. You will put... First, you put your plate inside. Then you will open this and put inside. But you must uh, put indicator. We have here strip indicator uh, to show that the media inside is uh, anaerobic. It will show color, color change, yeah? As a control method for uh, correct process. Yeah, and then you put the jar in the incubator. And the incubator, yeah. Okay. What's anaerobic, obligatory anaerobic bacteria, you know? Any idea? Anaerobic. Amma The important family of Clostridium. Clostridium tetanus, Clostridium family, Clostridium tetanai, which shy, all these are anaerobic. This is grand positive bacilli. While the grand negative is anaerobic, obligatory by macroids, groups, use bacteria, and we kill them. These are grand negative. Actually, if you know your patient clinical manifestation like abscess, for example, any abscess can be gram negative, anaerobic, can be. Okay, so you need to use this uh, means. Any idea? How many times are you test? You have lancets, lancets, proving. Yeah. Let's see the kids. What is the lancet proving? We have uh, for this uh, latex uh, agglutination test. Yes. We have different groups A, B, C, D, E, like that. Yeah. Adding it on the special filter, this one, and we do the grooming. This one, this put your drops, this, and then you add your culture swab. For example, take a piece of the culture and you add it on these drops. Then you find the glutination. That means this positive. Okay. And this is uh, will tell you this is group A or B or C. Or B. Uh, well, uh, uh, focus usually and uh, a lot of problems yani. so so we have to need to do so further test you need to know this uh, lancet groups you need to know hemolytic hemolysis you know hemolysis yes. what type of hemolysis we have alpha beta gamma okay don't forget this streptococcus and uh, more more tests you have to do okay you know how to differentiate between strepto and stuff stuff with coccus they are both cocci, they are both gram positive. So by vision you cannot just, like you have to do some test. Catalase and then coagulase uh, to know it's staph aureus or not. Catalase positive it is staph, catalase negative it is strict coccus. Okay. It's very nice. Huh? So this is not... Any question? Thank you. you feel this, uh, you give it to me in the la lecture, in this form. The other section, we need another section and you can see it in the video. Okay, any other section, you can do blood bank or serology, as you like. It's up to you, huh? I'll see you in the university, okay? Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
Uh, I would like to welcome the King Khalid University in the medical field, especially laboratory field, for their coming and visiting in our Asia Center Hospital Laboratory. My name is Yasser Abdullah al Rai. I am lab technologist. I am also the response for the internship in the laboratory uh, department. Uh, laboratory department is uh, our laboratory is one of the, the central and also reference department in the ASEO region. In, uh, our in our laboratory department, we have seven subclass of departments. Uh, sorry, six subclass of departments, which are uh, blood bank and hematology, clinical chemistry, microbiology, histopathology. Uh, and these departments are the mainly group. Also, in addition, we have uh, some of unique departments, uh, like the BCR department, which is called NAT department, which is nucleic acid test, that is done for the screening test for HIV and hepatitis, whether it is a P or C, uh, by using the technique of the PCR. Also, we have one of the unique departments, we have the flow cytometry department that is used for the diagnosis for the sum of uh, leukemic and also the cousins that is related to the blood uh, flotation. Uh, in ASEA in, uh, in Central Department, uh, the laboratory department, also we are concerning about the intern that we sure that all the intern in this uh, in the in, in the laboratory the taking all the information that they needed also at the same time they have taken the well practice okay and also that to be ensure that the, the intern has take all what it does he need for his internship because when he start, inshallah will be graduated uh, he can work in any hospital with uh, with with no problems um, finally i'd like uh, to thank you and uh, Inshallah, we have uh, more cooperation and cooperative uh, work with uh, King Khalid University. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.